good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. Another clutch of children's python hatched out right here. These are 14 little baby children. I They are absolutely adorable and it's kind of crazy to see all these children's pythons hatch out. Like I've been saying, it was a weird thing where all the children's pythons laid, then after they were done laying, all the Stimson's pythons laid, and after they were done laying, all the spotted pythons have been laying. So it's weird that there was no intermingle. Regardless, we have a bunch of little babies here. And speaking of spotted pythons, we actually have a clutch we can go pull right now. And as per mentioned, we have a spotted python clutch, so uh, yes. do the honors, Kelsey. Alrighty. What do we have? It's been a few days since we've had a spotted python clutch, so hopefully these guys will be good. Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful clutch. That's awesome. I know the last couple clutches have been a little bit weird with these guys, but these ones look absolutely incredible. And that's the one thing about spotted pythons is it looks like they have bigger eggs and fewer of them for some reason. Like children's pythons seem to be the highest production, at least for us. They have a little bit smaller eggs and a ton of them, but these guys look good. We'll get them in an egg box. We'll count them up and see what's going on. Mama, you did absolutely amazing. Just checking her to make sure she's completely fine, which she is. So she is good. We'll get these in here, count them up, see what we got going on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11? 11. 11. I think it's a, <laughs> again, those are hard when they're all piled up. And again, these incubated about 52 days or so, so they hatch pretty quick. That's why we've been hatching so many children's pythons lately. And of course, ball pythons, I think is next week is our first clutch of ball pythons, if I'm oh, not mistaken. Yeah, so, yeah, it's almost that time. Oh my God, it's so exciting. So there it is, uh, 11 more spotted python eggs. Just getting some food together to go next door and feed the tortoises, mainly Matilda. Um, sweet potatoes seem to be one of her favorites, so I got her some of those today. It is so absolutely gorgeous this time of year in Michigan. And you know, the crew always has their lunch like inside in the office. So I decided that I brought some tables and chairs that we can put out here. I figure we'll put it right over here. That way on days beautiful like this, we can all just hang out and have lunch out here and just enjoy this absolutely amazing weather. time back here over at the Reptarium. You know, a lot of people ask me, like, why do your snakes eat so good? I always show you these great strikes. The fact is, is that a lot of times when a snake is, like, happy, healthy, uh, in a proper enclosure with the proper temperatures and humidity, most snakes eat, but not all snakes. But with that being said, let's go ahead and feed Casper. You know he's always high energy. Boy, I tell you what, just opening the thing is crazy. Come on, Casper. Don't, don't bite me. Don't, don't. Ah! Ah! There he goes. Whew! <laughs> I think uh, this is the, probably the only snake that I always get a little jittery on for some reason because he just overstrikes everything. So I'll just go ahead, uh, put him back, and we'll move on to the next. And you have to remember, it depends on the type of snake that you're keeping. If you have a ball python that goes off of food for some time, that's absolutely normal, as long as it looks happy and healthy. If it's acting good, its body weight is good, you don't have to stress out. But if you have a retic, or you have a Burmese python, or a colubrid, unless it's during the breeding season, usually they want to eat. But snakes will skip one week, so don't panic every single time that an animal doesn't eat, but just keep an eye on it. Obviously, Sunfire here is definitely ready to eat, so let's go ahead and see what happens. Whew. Sunfire, come on girl, come on girl, there you go, oh there it is, Whew. she's another sketchy one, I love that snake, she is so absolutely beautiful. Hey what's up guys, just kind of doing some maintenance today around the shop, we got to change some waters on some snakes, unloading some mealworms, get mopped up, things put away, just another beautiful day here at the shop. The other thing you have to keep in mind is you have to try different things, right? Some snakes like rats, some snakes like mice. I hate to say it, but if a snake has been off food for some period of time, you might have to try live. Just keep an eye on it. But you know, when someone comes to me and says, like, my snake won't eat, and I say, well, what have you tried? And go, well, I've tried frozen mice for the last month and a half. Well, that might not be enough to get the animal to eat. You've got to give it all kinds of different options because usually, again, a happy, healthy snake that isn't on a food strike like a ball python will typically eat if you have the right food. But when you get into a snake like Night Fury here, that snake, whoa, jeez. I didn't even try to offer it. It just came out and took it. So uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about snakes like Night Fury. Feel 
free to comment down below if you have any questions about your snake and you, know, you can always reach out to BHB because at BHB we're always helping people out with their animals. I mean that's the way it is. Uh, feeding snakes is intuitive for us because we've been doing it for so long. I know it can be stressful when you have a snake that doesn't eat. Trust me. Uh, second rat for Casper. You may have noticed the one thing that we're really trying to do more of now with the vlog is, you know, give you the same of this as always. Also kind of pull the veil back and just show you the things that are happening when I'm not around with the rest of the crew and stuff like that. Speaking of which, Andrew, what's going on? What are you doing Hi. today? Um, right now I'm just feeding some geckos. Okay. Yeah. Your typical uh, feeding and cleaning and all the other yep, maintenance? all the duties. All right, cool. Again, we want to just kind of bring you guys on the journey of all the things, sometimes boring, but still show you what's happening in the course of a day here at the Reptarium or over at BHB. Number three for Casper. Oh! Whew. <laughs> that thing is awesome. <laughs> I love that snake. Uh, that's all he's going to get today. Three rats is good enough. And as I'm wrapping up the feeding over here at the Reptarium, just kind of wrap up my thought process on the food thing as well. You know, again, if you offer your snake everything that it could potentially eat, sometimes they get really picky where they'll eat rats for a bunch of times and then all of a sudden they want a mouse or, or sometimes even a chick or something like that or even a bunch of other tricks. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to do a vlog where I talk about a bunch of the tricks like dipping rats in chicken broth or tuna or salmon scenting or whatever just let me know in the meantime my last victim to feed here is Ricky and we'll see what he has going on here come on Ricky and there he goes <laughs> he wasn't as energetic as he usually is but uh, regardless that wraps up the feeding at the reptarium Excited that we finally have my Bella Cam back up and running. So for those of you guys that don't know, we have a 24 hour Bella Cam. So you can watch Bella, the camera's right up there in the corner. And uh, it's not that she's that exciting, but it's still cool to watch it. It's Reptile Live Cams. I'll put a link in the description, you go check it out. But more importantly, we are actually today running lines for six more cameras that are gonna be coming out. That's right, there'll be six more cages. Lucy, the alligators, the tortoises, a couple other cages, as well as a live reptile egg hatching cam. That's right, you guys can watch Clutch's hatch all summer long, so I'm pretty excited about it. But for now, you guys can just watch Bella if you want. And there's a really cool chat feature there, so I pop in every now and then and just say hi to everyone. So go check that out and show it some love. Okay, so you're checking back in with me. As you uh, could see earlier, Brian pulled out those uh, children pythons. So we got them washed off here in the bucket. I've got them some fresh tubs set up. We got the hides in there. I'm gonna go back and put waters in in a minute, but we'll get them in the cage for now and uh, kind to put them on the old Eric program, grow them up real nice. Jessica, what do we have today? We have Chinese cave gecko eggs. These are oh. um, the weird locality that we've right. got. Yep, exactly. These guys are awesome though. Mm -hmm. oh, gosh, they're so beautiful. And how do you know, just because of the way they're pushing around? Well, I looked in the bottom of this actually, and you can see them. Oh yeah, you can see them. <laughs> ah, she did a little cheating on me there. <laughs> so they're right All around right. here. Okay, so we should be right there. Yep. yep, there they are. Oh, they look good too. Oh my gosh, that is so oh, that awesome. A little bit stuck. Sometimes they literally adhere to the bottom, so they look really good. So there you go, oh, two more. Oh, more. we got more there. So we got a bunch of Chinese cave geckos. These things are absolutely incredible. Again, similar to a leopard gecko, but a little bit different as well. So, uh, yeah, so. they're actually a little easier. You don't need as much heat. Uh, you do have to mist them down once a day though. A little, little higher humidity, yeah. Right. Gotcha, cool. All right, so a couple more eggs for the day. We're all packed up with our new Reptarium containers and everything. We're actually off to do two school events, but as you guys know, sometimes at schools with kids, you know, you're just not allowed to film, so we don't have permission to film, so we're not gonna be able to take you on this journey. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it with the crew. And then when I get back, I have a tour. And speaking of tours, actually Noah and Eric have their first tour this weekend, so it should be really fun. We'll see what those guys get into. over here at the Reptarium and if you guys don't know you should know that we have a Noah and Eric tour Eric and Noah tour whatever you want to call it and 
you know, we've been brainstorming because we got to make this thing a lot better than my dad's, all right? You know what? No offense. What? We can't do it geezer style. No geezer. The young, man. fresh, too fresh, they, strapping young lads. They say hip nowadays. You got you, you oh, to stay hip. hip you oh, know? dude, I'll, you know, I'll do the old, uh, the, the Macarena. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know. So, you know, we've been brainstorming. I think that we're going to bring, like, some sort of, like, Caging wings, so oh, yeah, I think we should have a wing and pizza table. Yes, no that's what I'm saying. Right when you walk in, you're getting some food in you, and Ooh. then walking around, oh, holding Ooh. some animals, Ooh. man. Sounds like a good time. But this is just an update, letting you guys know that you can book your Noah Eric tour right now. Go do that because if you want to have a little bit more fun with your life, just a little come more on. wild, a little more reckless, you're in oh, danger yeah. though because it's just me and Noah, yeah. anything could happen. You literally have to sign a paper saying if you die, we're on your will. Okay. Guarantee you. Literally you know, guaranteed. We'll be so. upset, but we'll probably move on. <laughs> don't be like don't don't <laughs> worry about it. We're just gonna take a little bit of your money. Anyways, we're getting, <laughs> we're just getting off topic here. Go book a tour right now, guys. Please go book a tour. Just back from these school presentations. I wish I could have brought you guys along because it was really fun. We had two of them at two different schools, but it was the same school district. We have two more actually tomorrow, believe it or not. Again, it was a great time, good kids, and hopefully one day, one of those kids that was excited to see those animals will grow up and want to work with animals or be involved in conservation or whatever the case is. Regardless, a great time. Now I'm back at the shop. I actually have a tour to wrap up here before we're done for the night. Guys, bye. Thank you guys so much. Seriously, travel Thank safe. You. Come back anytime, guys. See ya. All right, bye, guys. <laughs> and I tell you what, that is going to go ahead and end the vlog today. I hope that you enjoyed this crazy journey. It was a hectic day, but an absolutely beautiful one. Have an amazing day. I love you guys so much. Be kind to someone. I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.